Sakdu's coming up. Thank you very much for sticking around. It is 523 in uh, the east, uh, 223 or 323 in the mountain time zone, just outside of Edmonton, where last night um, the greatest player in the game right now put on a show as the Oilers came back from a 3 nothing deficit against the Canucks, uh, sparked by the captain, Connor McDavid's hat trick. Uh, just an outstanding night uh, that he had in fantasy performance. And what a great opener uh, for the Oilers. As we bring in uh, Michael Amato, you can uh, read his stuff at uh, Sportsnet, at Goalie Post. Uh, he's also uh, helping us out. We're going to give away a Dauber Hockey Fantasy Guide today on the show, so you'll want to be uh, uh, paying attention to what we're talking about. But what a start loss. Let's let's start w- with McDavid. I mean, I don't know if the game was over by the time we exchanged notes and he had gone to, to, to new heights, but he, he just really, like the Oilers... They didn't have a great start, but this is the Oilers, and this is what every other team is now realizing, that no lead is safe with this team. Uh, and and they, they're showing it off on game one with a hat trick from their captain. Yeah, well, there there was talk, and I think you mentioned it last week, that uh, McDavid wanted to score more this year, and he uh, certainly didn't waste any time. Uh, it's I, I guess you're never really out of a game when you have Connor McDavid on your team. Uh, that was pretty spectacular, so... Yeah, hat trick first night, and uh, what a way to sort of kick off the new season. Oh, my God. It was uh, – like, listen, the entertainment value last night between the all-Canadian matchups, that Leafs-Canadian game was good back and forth. Same with the the, the Canucks and Oilers. Um, I haven't found – very many games that I'm like, well, this is a boring game. I'm going to switch the channel this year. Uh, you know, from going back to last Friday, we only had one game, uh, the the games in Europe. But starting on Tuesday with the two games, it's been an exciting start for the NHL. I don't think they could ask for a much better start than their marquee player getting a hat trick, the Rangers, an up-and-coming team with a great victory. I mean, it was a good first couple of nights in North America, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I, I really enjoyed some of the late games too. Like uh, LA Vegas uh, had a really good game uh, that first night there. And uh, even Seattle Anaheim, that was a, that was a wild one last night. Um, a big comeback by the Ducks. Lots of, lots of crazy goals in that game too. So yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah, that, uh, you know, uh, listen, I think the Anaheim Ducks, uh, I'm not sure they're going to be a playoff team, but they are certainly going to be a fun fantasy team, and they're, they are going to provide a ton of fantasy options. Uh, this is uh, quickly, there's a couple of baseball notes on here, so don't worry about it, but you mentioned John Gibson and the Ducks, or you mentioned the Ducks. John Gibson makes 44 saves and the victory, and he picks up an assist. I mean, <laughs> that's just bonus points in your league. Uh, like I said, you might not get a lot of wins from guys like John Gibson uh, or even Thatcher Demko, but you are obviously going to get the save bonuses yeah i think a lot of people um were kind of writing gibson off um including myself so it's obviously a good good start for him there um, i know he's had some lower numbers uh in the past few years but yeah it's gr- definitely a good start for him um obviously like you like you mentioned i don't think the ducks are, are going to get too many wins but i think they're probably going to score a lot and uh, be fun to watch so uh yeah when you when you're on the right side of it with uh with mm-hmm. gibson it's really good yeah, and uh, John Klingberg, a couple assists last night. Like, they definitely have some offensive pieces there as well. Might be at the expense of their goaltending, which could be the opposite of, of what is going on in Vegas, as as you pointed out. And and perfect prediction, by the way, because that third period in Vegas the other night, or in L.A., was, was pretty good. But let's talk about this weekend coming up, first of all, and then we'll go back and look at some of the more cool things that happen. And we always want to provide some goalies for people to... It's like rent a goalie on the weekend. Right, like because you're looking at matchups, you might want to stream a guy, grab a guy on waivers. Here are, I think, some really good options for a couple of games for people to pay attention to. Why don't you start with Brian Elliott and Tampa? Yep. So Tampa has a, a back-to-back uh, this weekend. I think for, yeah, Friday Columbus and uh, Saturday Pittsburgh. So I'm assuming um, he's going to get one of those starts. He played really, really well last year. Tampa is obviously a really strong team in front of him, and uh, you know you mentioned it earlier. They're coming off a, a tough loss. I think they're going to going to want to be pretty motivated. So I think he's a good option if you're, um, you know, if you're behind in your matchup or, or even this week's somewhat of a short week, you might need to hit your minimum start. So you might have to grab somebody. Um, I think he's a good play there. And uh, yeah, I think obviously uh, one of the San, o- San Jose guys, you know, Reimer, Kakinen, um, 
they'll be playing Chicago on Saturday. It'll be Chicago's third game in uh, four nights, I believe. Obviously not a strong team. And I think before before we came on here, I, I, I heard Reimer is starting tomorrow. So I have a feeling mm. it's going to be Kakinen on Saturday, but obviously not not confirmed yet. Um, but keep an eye on that. So yeah, if it's Kakinen against uh, Chicago with the, the Blackhawks third game in four nights, I think that's that's a good pickup if you need a win or a quality start. Because yeah, and remember, there's no no games on Sunday this week. So if you're in a head-to-head, you probably you got to do all your fine-tuning on on Saturday. That's a really good point and really rare. Like, um, I don't know uh, if a lot of people know about that. That is an extremely good point uh, because when you go to pick up a goalie on Sunday and there's no games, you've lost your matchup already. So that's an excellent point uh, by you. Uh, The Brian Elliott situation is really interesting for me. I went and I looked at the game by games uh, and he started more front half back-to-backs as the season went on in Tampa and they used Vasilevsky in the second half. In the first half, he was starting the second half of the back-to-back game. So maybe that's what happens here. I I think Brian Elliott is an interesting guy to have on your, your stream watch because the Tampa Bay Lightning have played so much hockey. I have to think Elliott might get him more games than he has in the past with El- uh, Vasilevsky getting a rest. And I think he played 19 games last year. So you might get a few more games out of Brian Elliott this year than last year. Yeah, it only makes sense. Like, I, I don't know why why Tampa would overwork Vasilevsky. Um, I think they've proven, you know, they're, they're just a strong playoff team. Like, they don't mm-hmm. necessarily need to win the President's Trophy or, or win the division as long as they get in they'll be fine. So if I'm Tampa, I'm probably giving Vasilevsky a few more nights off this year. And yeah, playing LA a little bit more, which is great if, if you're looking to stream someone. Yeah, totally. Uh, or, you know, if it, if, it, if he's going well and you wanted to stash a backup if you have room, but I'm not, I'm not crazy uh, about doing that. I'd, I'd rather use the uh, versatility on some forwards. And, and yeah, you said, you mentioned it, the Hawks, you know, he, they don't even need to be in three and four nights to be the free spot on the bingo card this year. It's going to be a contest between them and and Arizona uh, to see, you know, who is going to be the easiest, the backup night. Like, listen, I did the pre- and post-game show for the Oilers a lot of times. The Oilers uh, during those years saw a lot of backup goalies. So it's it's an important thing to know. Like, who is playing Chicago tonight? Who is playing Arizona tonight? It's not going to work every night because they do win some games. But knowing those free spot on the bingo cards is so important for streaming goalies. Yeah, it's critical. And there's actually, there's quite a few teams this year, I think, that are um, just given, you know, the, the Connor McDard, uh, sorry, uh, Connor McDard uh, carrot hanging out in front of a lot of teams. I think there's going to be a few more teams in that mix too, whether it's, you know, the Philadelphia Flyers, I think, are <laughs> another one that might really struggle this year. Um, I know a lot of people were asking me today if they should grab uh, Mackenzie Blackwood for tonight because the, the Devils are playing the Flyers and they right. think uh, – he might be a good ad. So, yeah, like you said, I think those types of teams are, are good to keep an eye on when uh, there's a goalie starting against them that's uh, on the waiver wire. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, if anybody does have any questions, uh, we are, of course, live on Twitch. You can just drop them in the uh, message board uh, and we'll throw them out uh, at Michael or uh, you can obviously reach him uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, we'll throw up uh, your uh, Twitter account there uh, at Amato underscore Mike. Uh, so if anybody does have any fantasy questions uh, for Mike, they can throw them in the Twitch chat or throw them out on Twitter, and we will uh, get to them. Okay, so the defending champs last night also in action, and they did not disappoint. Miko Rantanen especially with four helpers. Uh, Val Nachushkin, Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr combined for six points and 15 shots. There are some teams, and I, I used to look at the Kansas City Chiefs this way in football, that start any chief. D- is that what we're looking at with the Colorado Avalanche almost? Like, I'm not sure if you want to start the fourth liners or the, the third pairing defense, but certainly maybe the top six, top nine, and top four blue liners, they all seem to get points. And Maybe in Colorado you do want to start all their blue liners because they're so good, but are, 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 are most Colorado Avalanche must start at this point? I think they're definitely the team with, with the most amount of players you could roster or start. Um, and I think what's, what's interesting right now is um, there's, there's no Gabriel Landeskog. So there's obviously a spot there in the top six. Um, you know, Nachushkin is taking advantage of it. Lekkanen, um, Evan Rodriguez is up. Uh, I think Newhook's the other player that's in the top six right now. So, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see when Landeskog comes back, who drops down. Um, but, yeah, I think all those guys – 
um, that you mentioned earlier, obviously guys you're gonna, you're gonna own, gonna roster and gonna start. But yeah, it, pretty much anybody that's piggybacking off them um, is gonna be great to play. And the Avalanche, yeah, like, like you said, they're three lines uh, deep. They're, they're, you know, both power play options are, are pretty effective. So there's a lot to choose from there for sure. Yeah, the one thing I guess that's going to be interesting to watch is, uh, you know, is Alex Newhook a capable replacement for Nazem Kadri? Or, you know, are they going to have to look at some some other options uh, as they go or or whoever? So that that's really, and, and I think goaltending is a bit of a, a question mark, but like the Oilers, uh, they should be able to outscore uh, their mistakes on on most nights. Uh, Martin Nekash had a pretty good night as well. A goal, two assists, and he had the primary assist on uh, the game-winning goal. Not sure if there's bonuses uh, for anything like that in any kind of strange leagues, but he was in on the final three goals of the Hurricanes. That's the thing that I really like because that tells me Rod the Bod Brindamore is like, get out there, get out there. He sees a guy that's going hot and he wants to get him in on the action. So when a guy is in on a lot of the goals I get even more uh, excited than than you know even a hat trick or, or something like that just because this guy is showing his versatility and the K- Canes are showing that they really want him to be a part of their offense yeah and, and it's it's really encouraging if you're hoping for a, a nature's uh, bounce back season he, I think he was one of the more disappointing players last year in fantasy I think a lot of people were anticipating a, a breakout season for him and he kind of kind of went the other direction but He's a pretty important player for them now with uh, with Trocek gone. I, I think, like, obviously they have uh, Kaka Niemi centering that second line, and uh, Sveshikov is there too. So, like, if, if Natchez doesn't really go, it, it's it's going to be really tough because Kaka Niemi is not a real offensive threat. Um, so to really get Sveshikov going, I think a lot of people are hoping for a, a you know, 30-goal or 40-goal season from him, maybe a 70-point season from him. And I don't think he gets anywhere close to that without Natchez playing really well. So... Yeah, definitely. If you bank on him to bounce back, uh, it's an encouraging start for sure. You know, the the Carolina Hurricanes have done a lot of things really well. I wonder if they want like a mulligan on the Kotke and Emmy. Yeah, that's and you could sort of tell when they signed uh, Paul Stassi in the offseason that they're not quite 100% yeah. sure on Kotke and Emmy. But yeah, I could definitely, definitely see them regretting that. Um, well, you know, second line center is pretty important because they're pretty – they're pretty stocked everywhere else. And it, it's just that one second line center role. If he can't fill it, they might have some problems. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Hopefully uh, he can do it. But yeah, he hasn't really been a huge offensive mm-hmm. player in his career. So I think he's to play that high up in the lineup, he'll probably have to change that. Yeah, and hopefully he can. Uh, it just hasn't happened yet. And it's going to be more expensive than he probably should be at, at this point in his, his career. Uh, well, last night, uh, something happened, and the band is back together for the Boston Bruins. <laughs> like uh, this, you know, and, and like you think of the guys that they're missing too, right, from this team. But Bergeron, Krejci, Pasternak, eight points for the Bruins last night. Um, we're going to get into something else uh, with the Bruins and the, and the goaltending uh, end of things. But uh, this, you know, a lot of people are looking at the Bruins as possibly missing the playoffs because of the coaching change and the injuries. And I'm, obviously they're not going to get eight points every night, but they do have the veteran guys, I think, that will be able to weather the storm. Yeah, like every year it seems like uh, a lot of people think they're they're starting to get old and, and they're over the hill and they just keep rolling. They're such pros and, and and really looked like getting David Krejci back was a breath of fresh air for them. It's, it looked like a piece that they really missed in the top six. And his game, even though he's he's getting older, like his game just looks like it's going to age so well. Like he, he, it seems like he could play forever. You know, he doesn't really rely on a lot of speed. He's just so savvy with the puck. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he just he just made that whole group go and they looked they looked really good last night. So the, the the interesting thing is the goaltending decision. And, and I had Jeremy Swayman, Swayman as a guy that I thought was going to be a real uh, revelation this year. And one game doesn't mean anything, but he didn't start last night. Allmark did. Uh, pretty good. 33 saves, six of them on a power play in a, in a 5-2 win. Do we read anything into this? Do we have to wait, you know, 15, 20 games before we can figure out what the Bruins might do in goal? Yeah, and I think most most people um, were thinking about it the way you were because when I checked today, um, I think Swayman was ninety uh, percent rostered in Yahoo, and Allmark was was fifty seven. So, I, I actually do think it means something. I don't I don't think it means um, necessarily a bad thing for Swayman. I just I just think it means they're probably a lot 
closer together than a lot of people think. Like the gap between them is probably closer. I think they're probably going to play closer to a 50-50 split. Um, mm. So yeah, if you need goaltending help, um, Allmark's probably available in almost half the leagues out there. Um, and it looks like, yeah, he's going to get a lot of starts. He played well. So it uh, looks like the Bruins are strong. Uh, that's a guy I, I would be grabbing. But yeah, if you have Swayman, it's probably a mild concern if you were banking on maybe 60% of the starts from him. You're going to probably lose a few starts. But you know, like you said, it's one game. Things can change. But uh, yeah, definitely encouraging if you uh, took a chance on Allmark. Yeah, and and especially with a short short week with no games on Sunday, you're you know you could be yeah. uh, really out of luck, and then you're looking for a streamer. Uh, by the way, for baseball fans, Jordan Alvarez has hit another home run, a two run shot for the Astros. They lead three two in the sixth inning, uh, so that one getting very interesting. And uh, the the race for the Calder Trophy, I, I think there's it's an excellent race. Like I know I know we seem to say this a lot, but the crop of good young players is so fun, and we. We have a superstar in Connor McDavid and a superstar goal scorer in Austin Matthews. Like this is just a fun time to be in the NHL and watching it. And last night, two guys in the same game, uh, Matty Beniers of the Kraken, the first of what we think will be many, and Mason McTavish, who I was going to say played his first game, but he played everywhere last year, including nine games with the Ducks. And these are just two of the candidates a lot of people have, but this Seattle team, we talked about them being defensively buttoned down. They give up five in, in the first game, maybe some jitters, but definitely some good contenders for the Calder race on display last night. Definitely. Yeah, I think Veneers is up to 11 points in, in 11 career games going back to last year. Um, yeah, so I think he'll be definitely a contender for the Calder. Uh, McTavage was nice to see the Ducks um, playing him higher up in the lineup on the wing. I thought they might play him at center, maybe on the third line or something just to ease him in. But no, it looks like he's going to be playing up higher in the lineup. So that's really good if you're, if you're rostering uh, McTavish, but yeah, those two guys could, could easily compete. Um, I picked Marco Rossi to win the call before the season started. He had a really strong preseason, but yeah, it could be easily be either of these two guys too. There's a, there's a lot of young, young talent this year for sure. Yeah. I actually, I forgot Beneers played 10 games last year. I totally forgot that. I thought it was the end. Yeah. Yeah. Just McTavish when he, when he left uh, Michigan and nine points in 10 games. I mean, uh, that's, that's a pretty impressive haul. He has a goal and an assist uh, last night. Um, I mean, I I think Seattle, and we've talked about this, is going to be much better. I don't think either of these teams make the playoffs, but I think they do provide really good individual fantasy options. Yeah, I do as well. I think both teams, or I, th- I think you're bang on with Seattle. I think Seattle will be a lot better. Um, I think both teams will be fun to watch. I think, like last night, they'll be playing a lot of a lot of five four games. They'll probably lose a bunch of them, but. Yeah, it's great for fantasy. Um, unless you you have one of their goalies, you're not too concerned as long as the, the skaters are scoring points. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so uh, we talked about McDavid, what he did. Uh, the Oilers special teams were excellent uh, last night. The Canucks special teams l- last year weren't very good, and so that was the difference in the game. Um, and, and McDavid had a, had a pretty good week. Uh, in one night. I think you said that about Mika Zibanejad earlier on Twitter this week as well. Uh, like the, the, he, had a, he had a week that a lot of guys could dream of in one night, kind of like McDavid last night. You know, that's the kind of week that, you know, allows you to put your feet up and relax the rest of the week almost if you're in fantasy, eh? Yeah, I think like, I think it was nine shots he had, you know, <laughs> two goals. Uh, I think nine face-off wins if you're in a league that counts face-offs. He's pretty versatile. Like I think he was a, I think he was an uh, had an ADP in the third round, so a third round pick on average. That he's probably going to outperform that um, for sure. So yeah, he's he's great for multi cat leagues. He's actually decent for hits too. Like not great, but he's okay. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, yeah, he's he's such a great talent. He plays in every situation. He played. I think he played like yeah. uh, two forty four of short handed time the other night too. And you know, in in one of our leagues, that's a th- that's a stat that I love because not only do you know the superstars get to do that, and you know the the number one defenseman, but the number three and the number four defensemen are able to up their value a little bit in fantasy by playing key minutes because we know those guys are important. I mean, the guy I always look at is Jake uh, or Jay. Bomeister didn't put up a massive amount of points, but played such an important role for all those teams. Jacob Slavin, uh, the same thing, although the offense is coming. So it's an interesting category to, to have out there to try and increase the bet uh, the, uh, the production from some other guys. 
Yeah, and a lot of times it's 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 I kind of put in the category of shutouts where like one one shorthanded point or one shutout can really win the category for the whole week. And yeah, mm-hmm. I think you mentioned some guys uh, that fit into that bill. And, and I think just it's important to note too, just guys that play a lot in general, right? When you have categories like volume categories, whether it's blocks and hits, um, guys that play more just have more opportunities to, to pick up those those kind of stats. So yeah, ice time is a, a pretty underrated thing to look at. I, I love it. I, you know, when we would do our, uh, you know, game notes after games when I was at Global, I would always try to include ice times of players because I think it tells you who, well, it does tell you who the coach values uh, on in those situations. Uh, and speaking of coaches and who they value, you pointed it out brilliantly about Bruce Cassidy and Vegas and the defensive system. And man, did it ever stand out on opening night? They only gave up seven shots in the third period. They only gave up seven in the first as well, but lock Locking it down in the third period is something we probably should expect from Vegas. It might come at the expense of some points, although Eichel, Stone, Kessel, uh, they look pretty good in game one. But buttoning down defense is probably something that we should see a lot more, as you pointed out, and it worked perfectly for them on night one. Yeah, Cassidy's a, a really good defensive coach, and yeah, it's, it's showing up right away. Um, and I think that's what gave him confidence to, to kind of go into the season with uh, – with Hill and Thompson there at least to start. And uh, yeah, they looked, they looked pretty strong defensively. Um, you know, Eichel and, and Stone looked really healthy for the first time in a while. I think they were, mm. they're moving around pretty good. And I think Vegas is getting uh, Nick Haig back tonight for this first game. Oh, after his wow. kill. So another, another defenseman to add in there. And yeah, it should, uh, yeah, you might see a little bit of a different, different style in, in Vegas this year, maybe a little bit more uh, defensively focused, but yeah, I'm sure, uh, if it helps them get wins and get back to the playoffs, yeah, that's what their main focus is going to be. So, yeah, I think Cassidy um, is – you're probably going to see a lot more of that style, especially in third periods. For sure. And, you know, Phil Kessel slides into that top line right now, um, you know, for, for at different times. A guy that can play line one to line three. Uh, you mentioned Nick Haig uh, is going to improve their, their power play, their second power play unit. I mean, Vegas, the, the, the writing off of Vegas, I think, is a little bit premature. I'm not saying it's not – uh, you know, they're, they're as good as they have been in the past. There's been some moves, but they still have an incredible amount of talent. Health is going to be the thing for them because they don't have the depth. That is going to be the thing that holds Vegas back, in my opinion, is health. Definitely, yeah. They're obviously one of those teams that's tight to the cap, and, and any team um, that is in that situation, you're going to be pretty top-heavy, and you're going to rely on those main guys. And, yeah, if they do get a... Uh, you know, a stone injury or an ankle injury, it's, it's going to be tricky to overcome, but uh, yeah, right now um, I, I think they're, they're looking pretty strong after, after one game, they, they look like they're definitely playing with more of a purpose and more of a, a team concept. I think this year. I think Eichel can get 50. I, I really do. And I can't wait to watch Vegas Oilers to see Eichel McDavid more often this year because, you know, nobody's as fast as Connor McDavid, but Jack Eichel is pretty good. He's a pretty good skater, and he's got a wicked release. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, finally, I'll just throw, here's my projections uh, for the top goalies this year. Uh, I took uh, Sorokin of the Islanders out and I'm trying to think of uh, the other guy from the top 10. Oh, Bobrovsky I took out. I moved Jack Campbell in because I think the win volume he's going to get. Um, but usual names, uh, Thatcher Demko, another guy that's going to play a lot. Um, Vasilevsky, I think the games come down as we talked about. Uh, but what do you think about this list? Anybody glaring that is missing off of this list from last year or, or going into this year? Uh, no, it's pretty good. I, I, again, a, a lot of these guys are so close. Um, I personally probably would have included Sorokin, but I know a lot of people mm. don't have him in their, their top 10 as well. I just think, um, I think the Isles are probably going to be uh, a lot better this year. And I think Sorokin, even though the Isles had a, a really bad season last year, his numbers still improved from year one to year two. So that's the only one I would say, but yeah, all these, all these goalies are, are, are sort of must owns goalie ones on, on any fantasy team. Um, yeah, I see Saros there. I really like him. I, I actually think he could narrow the gap sort of. On, I know we talk about the big two all the time, Vasilevsky and Shesterkin, but I think he could sort of work his way into the conversation. He's He plays a ton and his numbers never go down. So, yeah, he's really impressive guy as well. 
And, and, you know, Freddie Anderson, um, you know, people forget because he wasn't around for the playoffs, but he had a terrific year last year. So uh, I, I think the goaltending, oh, yeah. like I, I said, the, the NHL is so fun to watch right now with the creativity and the speed. Um, you know, if we could get a little bit less of the, the dragging and the star, dragging down of star players, it'd be awesome. But beggars can't be choosers. Uh, it's the first start, and we're off to a good one. So enjoy the weekend, the first weekend in hockey, Saturday night. Uh, as we mentioned, look for those goalie matchups. Who's playing Chicago? Who's got the back-to-backs? Pick up your streamers, and make sure you're following uh, Mike on uh, Twitter. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, Dean. Take care. You betcha. As always, it is uh, fun to chat with uh, Mike Lamato. You can find him on Twitter at Mike underscore or at Amato underscore Mike. Uh, you can check him out at Sportsnet Fantasy Hockey, covering it for Sportsnet at Goalie Post. And there we have the uh, team preview of the Vancouver Canucks. So, if you want to get your hands on a Dauber. Hockey Fantasy Guide, here is the question, or the answer to the question you have to drop into the chat on Twitch. How many points did Bergeron, Krejci, and Pasternak combine for last night? 